court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Rhino. What'd I do? You murdered me in like a million different games. Where's your proof? All these videos. I don't know if those hold up in court, considering you edited them. Son of a bitch. <laughs> also, my judge voice completely changed throughout all that. Yeah. Why are you constipated as a judge? <laughs> Look, you don't know what's behind this desk. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, overruled. What? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, YouTube? This is Arya Yoshi as usual. I am Max Wright. I am Rhino Edgeworth. Or Rhino Fay, but whatever works. Now... We're playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. If you're wondering why we're not playing the first Phoenix Wright game, that's because I've played it twice and seen like 50 million Let's Plays of it, and Rhino already knows pretty much everything about it, aside from the fifth bonus case. I could not be bothered to watch that one that long. Yeah, so I'm going to give a recap for anybody who hasn't played the first game or hasn't seen anything about it. I would suggest you like watch a Let's Play or play it before watching this one, but uh, I'll give a quick recap of the events that happens in it. Okay. If you don't want to, if you don't want to, spoiler recap. If you don't want to hear uh, this recap, just skip to whatever timestamp now shows up on screen. <clears throat> Phoenix Wright is a defense attorney. He is known by a, his friend. He's known to his friends as Nick, and he works for Mia Fey, who in the second case ended up being killed by a corrupt, you know, company executive named Red White. Uh, Phoenix ended up having to get Mia's younger sister Maya Fey declared innocent because Maya was accused of the murder. Uh, Red White ended up accusing Phoenix at some point, so Phoenix then had to get himself acquitted, and long story short, he succeeded and Red White went to jail, and, He's a douche. <laughs> and because Maya's sister is now dead, who was previously Phoenix's boss, Maya joins up with Phoenix as, like, a partner. I don't quite understand the context behind why all that happened, but it did. So and then for some reason, Phoenix inherits Maya's, or Mia's law firm. Yeah, uh, well, to be, to be fair, I imagine he was the only other lawyer working there. Weird. Also, uh, another interesting thing that should be noted is that Maya is actually a spirit channeler and is able to summon her dead sister back temporarily to help Phoenix, which happens, like, every five minutes. I feel like they eased up on it a bit at the end. Mm, yeah, I don't think it showed up at all in the bonus... Well, obviously it didn't show up at all in the bonus case. We'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, uh, then there were a couple... Uh, there was a case or two that didn't really affect the plot too much. Uh, Miles Edgeworth uh, is a childhood... Prosecutor. Is a prosecutor who was a childhood friend of Phoenix. And the two of them end up facing each other in court constantly because apparently they're the only lawyer and prosecutor to ever exist. Uh, now, basically, Edgeworth... He does, you know, he's like, I will do anything to get a guilty verdict, blah, blah, blah. And as time goes on, he starts to ease up on that. He's like, no, instead of just guilty verdicts, I need to find the truth. I need to find who the, tr who the true killer is and things like that. So over time, he and Phoenix go from like rivals to sort of helping each other. Then Edgeworth is accused of murder. Uh, he's accused of murdering an attorney from long ago. Uh, the case details are kind of fuzzy to me, so I'll just go over the important parts. Edgeworth's sort of adoptive father, Manfred von Karma, ends up being the prosecutor who goes against Phoenix when Phoenix decides to defend Edgeworth. And long story short, it turns out that not only is von Karma, you know, von Karma was not the killer in this case, but he did uh, sort of hire someone to be the killer. He was also the killer in a previous case long ago where he killed Edgeworth's real father. Yep. And basically, Phoenix gets Von Karma declared guilty of that. He gets the real killer declared guilty of killing the person people thought Edgeworth killed. And then, in the end, Edgeworth, like, goes off somewhere. And then happy group photo. Yep. And then also, Maya leaves to go back to her village to train better to become a spirit channeler. Because she was kind of falling out of that. Yeah, I think she, like, tried to summon Mia and failed or something. Yep. Basically, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know, more or less. You know, Phoenix, Maya, Mia, etc. Mia's dead. That happened. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, yeah, Detective Gumshoe is also a person that we'll meet. <laughs> He's a detective. He's goofy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyway, now that I think you hopefully all know about Phoenix Wright, more or less, since I just gave that very terrible explanation, let's Unless start... Harry Butts shows up, I think you're covered. It's Larry Butts. 
they call him Harry at times. They do, but his name is Larry. Also, yeah, e- like every character that isn't a main character has a funny name. You'll see. Apparently that's a thing with the series. Like, everyone's name is a pun in some way. Like, yeah, basically everyone's name is... Like, here's an example. One of the witnesses, who ended up being the killer, but anyway, one of the, one of the witnesses in the first game, the witness of the first case was named Frank Saw It. Yep. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start this game now. New game, I am playing and Rhino is my Maya, basically. And we're starting with episode one, The Lost Turnabout. I blame you if I spontaneously grow boobs in a distant personality. There's like Beethoven music playing now. Huff. Huff. Puff? Urgh! How did I get into this mess? Well, you did try out for the big bad wolf roll. That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Oh, hi, Judge. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this! B- but I'm just a simple defense attorney! I'm Silence! God. <laughs> you are no longer worthy of your title! Judge Smash! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lower the game audio after all. Because you're quiet compared to it. Sorry. September 8th, 9.08 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Aren't they usually in three? I mean, it doesn't... It, there's like one to four. Oh, right, matter. Lobby. This isn't the courtroom. Oh, yeah. What a nightmare. I bet it was this rain tone that caused it. Well, change it, dumbass! Oh yeah, also, just so people know, I have played this game a little bit, but it was a while ago, and I only played the first, like, two or three cases, so... Wait! I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Put your jacket on, you bum. <laughs> Beep. Huh. Looks like they hung up. Ah, oh, good. I finally found it. This fire extinguisher. <laughs> Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. Okay, so question. Do they tend to show the the, the criminals before the case? I mean, I noticed they did it with the first couple cases. The first cat, I was like, okay, introducing them to this concept, show them, so they sort of know who to look out for. But then at the end, they were like, no, we ain't showing you shit. Uh, they do it in this one, obviously. I don't think they do it in future ones. Okay, good, because that I admit after the first few cases, that kind of pissed me off. I'm like, no, let me figure it out. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, they only did it in the first two of the first game, and then they did it here, and yeah. Anyway. A few minutes later, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. You're gonna let me be her, aren't you? I mean, she doesn't show up yet. <laughs> mm. Ouch! My head hits throbbing. Kinky. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Good morning. This is actually who I meant, but okay. Oh, you go ahead and be here or her once I figure. I was just curious because you've been everyone so far. Just let me mess with the volume more. Again? I mean, I know the music's loud and people have to adjust it almost every time they play, but still. Ah! Uh, good morning? What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but could you please turn the cheeriness down? Nope. <laughs> My head sort of hurts. Suck it up. <laughs> Roger that. Oh, she's agreeable. <laughs> Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? And make it double. Wait, wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong? What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. Look how many feathers I have. <laughs> what? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? And they suddenly give her name instead of waiting like one more text box. Heh, <laughs> bird. <laughs> life in my hands but you have so many phoenix downs you promised me you said you would prove that i was not guilty N not guilty just when i thought all hope was lost when all the other lawyers had laughed me off leave it to me you said you the one and only phoenix right came to save the day sparkly eyes 
<laughs> Just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. You're gonna, give, you're gonna give yourself I'll a never concussion. <laughs> I'll never forget what you. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I'm always rooting for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and. What's wrong? <laughs> You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. Is it my feathers? <laughs> you're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. <laughs> So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? I'm not going to be near as expressive as these people expect me to be. Okay, so, sorry, I saw something, like, out of the corner of my eye, and I thought it was Pip in my room somehow, and then I turned around, I saw it, like, in the reflection of some glass, I turned around and she wasn't there. Is Pip behind you going, what? <laughs> Turns out that actually, the glass is actually reflecting me for once. <gasps> this is a weird angle. Mr. Wright, how can you say that? With my voice. How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? With my voice. You're absolutely horrible. With Sorry, my... I thought that was capitalized for some reason. <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just, well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I'm... Who am I? Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? What am I fighting for? The trial will begin shortly. Thank you, Painted Bailiff. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? I don't think it's any of those two guys, so... Uh, the trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Awk. I, ref ah! I refuse. I refuse to. I refuse to call it okay when it's spelled literally as O K. Fine. Every time she says okay, I'm gonna go. Ah! <laughs> hmm. I guess I must have amnesia. Well, uh, at least it raises my special defense. Let's see. What can I piece together? Hmm. Perhaps this puzzle. <laughs> From our conversation, I can safely say that I'm probably a defense attorney. She's going to give herself amnesia if she keeps doing that. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. What? Ah! Someone! Please! Tell me this is just a bad dream! Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Ooh. Ah, yes, the Scooby-Doo. September 8th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Yeah, they... courtroom poop. They don't, they don't always use number three. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, if number one is peeing and number two is poop, what is number three? Diarrhea. <laughs> I guess it is kind of a mix. Court is now in session for the trial. Actually, do you want to be the judge so that you have a constant rule? Sure. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other fence attorneys here? I'm, I'm basically <laughs> going to be trying out a couple different ones until I find which one I like. <laughs> you see, kind of as I like, do you see another defensive attorneys here? It's like, oh, sorry, I have amnesia too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> no, then, are you ready? No. Um. What if I said no? Would that be alright? Of course it wouldn't. Then why bother asking to begin with? Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair, but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I did. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. Dun dun dun. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? You blew him? Oh, and you also no, killed him? No, no, no. Anal. It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. Wait, yeah. what were you lovers like? <laughs> yeah, what other definition is there? <laughs> In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. 
Yeah, in case you're wondering why I'm giving him that whiny voice, you'll see as time goes on. Also, his name is Winston Payne, so now you get to see the punny names. Winters in pain, yay. Okay. W Winst in pain. Yep. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. This is a genocide run. Okay. And who are you again? Please bring Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. <clears throat> Witness, please state your name and occupation. You get to be him. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> uh, hmm. Give me a moment here. <laughs> My name is Detective Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. I don't know how to actually make the text speed up, so... You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. In bed. You work under that detective? Yes, sir, he's quite heavy, and while I was a trainee, <laughs> he was always watching out for me, sir. That that thing on top of her hat, not the feather, but, like, the yellow thing, every time I look at it out of the corner of my eye, I think it's a smiley face. I thought it was a cat face at the very beginning. <laughs> he's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. You know, testify against you. Ok, ok, calm down, I believe you. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. I have to think of a lot of different voices for this game, aren't I? I welcome the challenge. Well, to be fair, you you get the you just happen to have three characters right away, so. I know, I know, but I I have been meaning to try and get a better handle on my variety of voices. All right. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Expose Park. Expose across the USA. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, did, did you even know that one before you said it out loud? Nope. <laughs> I love it. I See, this is the best part about doing a Let's Play. We'll say a name out loud and then just start laughing. Yay. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The Landon beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. Jesus. And then, and that then the round was aggressive. <laughs> and, then, and then the TARDIS showed up out of nowhere. And landed on him. <laughs> the details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Oh yes, this autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? Because you don't remember anything. <laughs> I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact in the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Ding. Very well, the court accepts it's in evidence. Ah, I love that sound. Hey, now we can see our evidence down here. Which on the... Da -da -da. Like, yeah, that basically. Well then, I recall yesterday's preliminary hearing. I don't! Good. A very important <laughs> piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess? Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There's a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Kind of. Well, actually, um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like that such how can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. I've had like four cases, five if you count the re-release. <laughs> Alright, sir, I'll help you through this. Force tutorial! Yay! At a time like this, I think maybe you want to take a glance at the court record. Court record? That I don't button, for I don't see sake. a button that's... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can totally just imagine her saying that, too. It's like just pointing down on the right. It's like, right freaking here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, info about the people and evidence involved with this case are all listed there, sir. Yeah, that's something new with this game that we'll get into in a second. You can look at the court record by touching the court record button. Court, court record button? Record. Yes, it's right there on the desk. You really know what you're talking about, huh? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. I don't think I'll be able to wear near as many Phoenix Downs, though. Alright, yeah, that's my job. I'm Phoenix Wright. Anyway, so... <laughs> oh my right. god, Phoenix Down! Phoenix Right! Phoenix Left, Phoenix Up? Yeah, exactly. Alright, so yeah, here we have our evidence. The attorney's badge. It's my all-important badge. It shows that I am a defense attorney. What is we this have... evidence of? 
<laughs> we have a cell phone. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. It means I can communicate with the outside world. <laughs> Dustin's autopsy report. Time of death? September, September 6th at 6.28 yeah. p.m. Damn, yeah, I was trying to remember which month is number 9. Cause? Broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. Glasses. Found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Ooh. Crime photo 1. The victim fell from the walking path above. Check the check button for details. Yeah, it, with photos, you can, like, press check and you uh, can, like, look at the actual photo. For a second, I thought his hat was an anvil. Yeah. Now, we also have profiles. Hello. <laughs> with, these are things we actually have to present. Yep. We actually present uh, profiles in this game. You didn't do that before, like, I believe, in the previous game. You could, like, look at the profiles, but you never had to present them. And uh, now it's like, I think this person did it. It's more like you present them, like, the way you do evidence. Like, can you give an explanation for why these two would hate each other? Yes, I present this person. They were fighting over this girl. Lifts her up and presents her to the judge. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> like, oh, right. thank you. I always wanted to police one. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie Bird, my client. The only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. Can you actually recall that, or did you just tell? <laughs> Dustin Prince, the victim and a policeman. It seems that he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. They had eggs. Win <laughs> Winston Payne, the prosecutor for this case. Lacks presence, generally bad at getting his points across. No, I'm not. Dick Gumshoe, detective at the local precinct, in charge of the initial investigation. Yes, I am, sir. <laughs> Okay, and I also, normally there would be, I think in the previous game, they would have, like, Phoenix himself was in there. Or maybe even for, no, maybe he doesn't, I actually don't remember. But anyway. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. S sorry, your honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record. Already did that and see what I can find. What was it again? The court record button? Uh <sighs> All right, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Uh, glasses, obviously. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. They were nearsighted. The victim grabbed the criminal's glasses as he was being shoved, sir, and held onto them as he fell. <laughs> hey, why aren't you giving me the evil eye? What was glasses you're wearing? Eh... Yes, this is my spare pair. These glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. Why is it that whenever they always end up finding something at the scene of the crime that they believe belonged to the defendant, it's always so convenient that the defendant lost theirs the same day. I will say, the style of glasses makes me think that she's right, because if her current or spare pair matched the style of her other pair, then they wouldn't have rims on the top like the glasses in, that were being shown. That might just be uh, sprite limitation. Ah, uh, Plus, also, her eyes are kind of dark. Maybe there are lenses or whatever there that we can't see. But anyway, you sure about that? Look, it was coincidence that on the same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. Sorry, there was a bit of hesitation there from Skype. A coincidence, she says. Uh. <laughs> Your honor, I'll get you, my pretty. I have further oh, evidence. <laughs> I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more. And this evidence is very decisive. Indeed, I shall have used my hammer for no reason. <laughs> Gavel, sorry, forgot the word. Very well. <laughs> Let's hear from our witnesses about this evidence. Witness testimony. Decisive evidence. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write down the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. How? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name. Maggie, sir. Misspelled. His neck was broken. Yeah, his neck was broken, and he spelled the name wrong. How? Well, I guess this is the tutorial case, but seriously, guys. With this piece of evidence in the glasses, it's hard to say she's not the culprit. Although, to be fair, Gumshoot, not happy about it. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Why, this is excellent handwriting for a dead man. Yes, I can see the name. It's written clearly here. Also, in order for him to write that M, his arm would have had to, like... Go freaking... over his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, he's, he would have had to have, like, Dalzim's arm. 
It's like too clear, especially if you're writing it near death. You would think you would be just like trying to scribble it out before you keel. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, he's also like very fancy, like M A G with the loop, G with the loop. You think he would have like just qu- a like, scribble or something? Yeah, like M Z, like right, like right by your head or something. Yeah, like now if if anyone ever shows up with a body and it wrote like two letters and then it just smeared away, I would be like, he wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not if his neck's fucking broken. True. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it under evidence. Alright, so then we get the second crime photo. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious, the victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. Why doesn't she point out the misspelling? And well, how I do don't you think she's allowed to. <laughs> how do you explain his dying message? What? Wait, no, like, point it out to Phoenix! Oh, that's a fair point. <laughs> like, but my name's spelled E-Y! <laughs> I know, it's just like, here's my legal documentation of how my name is spelled. <laughs> it's conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! Bush did it! Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Uh, he has a cross for me to examine? This is it, I'm counting on you! Sure. What am I supposed to do? Cross-examine also- them! Let me just say, I'm kind of, the main reason I was having trouble deciding whether or not to actually do the first game, the music in Justice for All is not nearly as good as the music in the first game. Oh, is it? I can't hear. It, it, it's com- it's actually completely different in uh, Justice for All and Trials and Tribulations. Uh, well, I think it's a different in Trials and Tribulations, but anyway. So what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. And kiss them. get in their faces and do what? Ew! I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. Prosecution's witnesses all hired things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Which means they should all technically be arrested. <laughs> lie? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Like I solemnly swear to tell the full truth. He did it. <laughs> but isn't that detective your superior? <clears throat> Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Okay, if it's something like that, that probably doesn't count, right? True. Yeah. Hmm, with that detective, he does sort of look like a scatterbrain. Ah, uh, what's over here? Hmm, ah, uh, <laughs> there, hmm, ah, uh, up here. Uh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. <laughs> That's why when you question witnesses, you have to ex- find and expose their lies. Bam! Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Now. Yes, your honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. And if you yeah. fail, you will be incinerated. If <laughs> I can expose the lies, we should be all right. Decisive evidence. All right, you don't need to read these out loud uh, when you. it's just showing up there. When it's in green text, don't bother. So, okay, because they already said it. <laughs> all right. Rhino? Yep. Next episode, we will do what everybody does when playing this game. Press Press everything. everything. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Next episode, we will cross-examine Detective Rhino Gumshoe. I have been Phoenix Max Wright. I am Rhino Gumshoe with my dirty coat. (laughs) And your bandage on your chin. I'm badass like that. (laughs) And my pencil behind my ear. (laughs) I'm a nerd like that. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye.